Aloha, everyone. My name is Jonathan De Potter, and what I have to share today is for leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs. And we're going to talk about the science of how to unlock the rest of your brain, accelerate your growth, and live to your fullest with plant medicine and by avoiding the common mistakes. Now, our first customer success story is from Vanessa, who shared that I highly recommend it for anyone who is looking to improve their lives or is curious to uncover the deeper levels of our consciousness through a grounded, no-nonsense, practical approach. Thank you, Behold, for this wonderful and unique experience. The science for plant medicine is pretty compelling, and it really shows how we can unlock the rest of our brain. Now, the image here on the left is uh, published in 2014 by the Journal of the Royal Society Interface. Uh, and what it shows is the brain on the left-hand side with a placebo and the brain on the right-hand side uh, under the influence of psilocybin. And, and each of the circles around the circle represent a different region of the brain. And so you can clearly see that on the right-hand side under the influence of psilocybin, uh, the brain is much more interconnected. And in fact, there's a lot more information exchange between the regions of the brain. Now, what's interesting about this is that if you scan the brain of a Buddhist monk with, say, 20 or 30 years meditation practice, the image looks more like the picture on the right-hand side under the influence of psilocybin than it does in your typical Westerner's brain, uh, for example, on the left under, under the placebo. Now, what's happening in the brain? Um, so it's worth recognizing that there's still science here that we don't understand, but what we do know is that plant medicines such as psilocybin and ayahuasca uh, promote neurogenesis, which is the growth of new neurons as well as new neuronal connections. Um, and so through those, uh, those new neurons and through those new connections, we're facilitating information exchange and reconciliation uh, between parts of the brain that normally do not communicate. Um, and clearly, you know, if those parts of the brain already had information freely exchanged between them, there wouldn't be this requirement for this, you know, this, this reconciliation that you can see that's taking place on the right hand side. Um, along with that, there's kind of this decompartmentalization and also a gain in our neuroplasticity. So we're effectively regaining uh, aspects of our brain function, which is really believed to be at the root cause of the benefits and the sustained benefits that we see that's, that's coming out from this research. Now, as you might imagine, these are pretty profound experiences um, to have such a reconciliation taking place in the brain. Um, and there was a recent study by John Hopkins University uh, where almost 50% of participants described their experience as the single most uh, personally and spiritually significant of their lives. More than 90% of those participants uh, rated it as amongst their top five uh, most significant experiences. Now, you might be asking, why do our brains benefit from these experiences? We'll share a little bit more on that later. But um, in the meantime, uh, you can see some additional references here. Uh, Time has a great uh, summary of the uh, John Hopkins University study that I just mentioned before. Uh, and there's some other papers here that I think you'll find interesting if you're, if you're into the hard science. One here on PubMed from uh, Psychedelics Promoting Structural and Functional Neural Plasticity. Uh, another here from Science Direct in terms of how um, neurogenesis is, uh, is created through, through psychedelic substances, plant medicines, uh, and others here from Neurology Live, from Nature, and New Scientists. So if you're into the hard science, feel free to take a look at, uh, at these in-depth articles here. Now, our second customer success story is from Greg from California. Uh, and he shared that this was my first experience working with healing psychedelics. And while I was initially pensive, the Behold team put me at ease. They really helped us prepare for an experience to be able to bring home lessons that will hopefully last a lifetime. You can expect your retreat to be safe, well considered, and that you will be cared for throughout the process. You are in good hands. Now, we have two decades of research from leading institutions that really prove the safety and benefits from plant medicine uh, to accelerate long-lasting psychological growth. Um, and that research is coming out from Imperial College of London, Yale, uh, John Hopkins, NYU, uh, CIIS, the California Institute of Integral Studies, uh, and also Harvard. Now, the range of benefits that have been proven through this work is enhancements to cognition and creativity, uh, to consciousness, which we're definitely going to talk a lot more about today, uh, to sense of belonging and connectedness, so feeling more interconnected with the, the, the loved ones around you, uh, and also life satisfaction, um, so just being happier with life as it is. Um, the other, other benefits that can come are also uh, clarity of purpose, 
Um, so getting a real sense of your mission uh, here in life and, and what you enjoy doing and what you like to be doing more of or less of. Um, I mentioned before relationships and uh, not only to others, but also to yourself. So how is it that you're thinking about and relating to yourself? Improvements to mood and behavior uh, and also an overall sense of well-being. So clearly quite a broad and, um, and compelling uh, set of benefits that have been proven by this, uh, by this leading science. Um, and here you can see uh, the links for some of the, the, the more in-depth research. So I've shared here the links for each of those academic institutions so that you can go ahead uh, and read some more of the, the research that's coming from them if you're so inclined. Now, our last customer success story is from Lin Dane from Hong Kong, uh, and she shared that they provided practical exercises for us to ground ourselves, refine our intentions, and enjoy the experience throughout. Meditation, Qigong, uh, breathwork, and nature appreciations. The conversations flowed naturally in and out of the sessions, and through the retreat, I gained a deep appreciation for all that I have and the complex simplicity and beauty of life. Cliché as it may sound, these realizations sunk into my heart and mind as never before. I also felt some energy blockages removed and that my chi now flows more freely. Now, just wanted to reiterate again, this, is, this presentation is really for successful leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs. Um, and really, this is for people who are already operating at a high level, uh, but deep down uh, feel that you've got a greater potential within and you're motivated to unlock it. You're ready to invest uh, against your ego and towards your true self, and you're prepared to face yourself honestly uh, and to accept the challenges that may arise in doing so, and are willing to be coached and helped. Now, I think this last one is, is important. It's, uh, there's a lot, a lot of leaders out there are, are kind of do-it-themselves sorts of or of people, and so it's it's important that they are that you are in a position to uh, to accept help. Um, now, I think you will also feel like you have more to offer life, and you believe that life will reciprocate. Um, and then finally, that you want to live life to the fullest, and of course, without regrets. Now, what's interesting about this work is that it's quite common for leaders to feel or be limited by the very same strength of mind that brought them success. Um, so, you know, kind of in, in a summary, uh, what got you here won't necessarily get you there. Uh, and so there's a lot of leaders, you know, within, within the world now who feel like they've climbed the ladder, um, they've reached a certain level of success in their career, and they're ready for deeper purpose, right? Um, other sets of leaders who kind of feel like they've reached a plateau or they're feeling a little bit stuck or like something is missing uh, and they're just in need of a breakthrough in order to have uh, you know, a deeper appreciation for, for life, perhaps even just as it is. It's also quite common for us in the modern world to be overthinking uh, or comparing. Uh, and so we get kind of stuck sometimes in these, these habit patterns of thinking about what if life was this way or what if life was that way or what if I had this or what if I didn't need that? Um, and, uh, and, and those patterns can get in the way of our, our overall happiness and as a result of that, um, our, our success. Um, often we've got entrenched beliefs, right? Um, commonly from a young age in terms of what we are and what we're not, what we're good at. Um, perhaps we've got lower level emotions around you know, uh, fear or scarcity um, or uh, pride that are keeping us from really reaching the next level. Um, and it's also common for us to have uh, unhelpful patterns of the mind, right? Um, spoke a little bit about this before, but uh, often those unhelpful patterns can also take a physical manifestation, whether that be, um, you know, uh, food or alcohol or drugs or media usage, porn. Uh, the list goes on and on. There's there's many coping mechanisms that uh, that that kind of manifest by virtue of this kind of inner turmoil uh, that leaders often feel. Um, and then the last one is emotionally disconnected, right? Uh, you've got so much going on in your life that uh, you haven't been able to invest in the relationships of those near and dear to you. Uh, and over time, that can begin to take a toll and, and you no longer feel connected uh, to family and friends in the way that, uh, that you once did. Now, all of these problems are completely common. Uh, and what they, share, what they share is that they're all functions of a successful modern life um, and the egoic mind, right? Over-identification with the mind. Now, uh, if you want to harmonize your mind and your inner world uh, so that you can thrive more in your outer world, then, then you're in the right place. Now, pretty much everyone deserves and wants to have vibrant physical and emotional health 
They want to have great relationships. They want clarity of purpose and passion for the work that you do. Uh, you want financial freedom uh, and you know, leisure time uh, as and when you want it. And you want to live each day with more love, joy and inner peace. Um, and again, I'll emphasize this uh, this point around inner peace because commonly, you know, leaders are quite driven, uh, and as a result of being driven, uh, often are, are not at peace within. Uh, and, and it's absolutely possible to have both: to be peaceful within uh, and to be achieving big things in in the real world, uh, as it were. And um, uh, on the right hand side, I've uh, I've pulled the top five regrets, uh, which is uh, great research that's been done. Uh, by a palliative nurse who interviewed people in the later stages of life and asked them what their regrets were and what they might have done differently if they had another chance. And so this is the top five list that, uh, that came up through that research, which I think is, is worth bearing in mind um, to see whether, you know, to see whether we think we might have some opportunities to adjust today uh, that would benefit us uh, down the line and looking back on our lives in, you know, however many decades time. So the first regret is that we wish we had the courage to live a life that was true to ourselves and not what others expected. Um, the second is that we wish we hadn't worked so hard. Uh, the third is that we wish we had the courage to express our feelings and really you know, share with our, our loved ones and our, our near and dear uh, people how much they actually mean to us. Uh, number four, that we'd stayed in touch with friends. You know, it's, it's common for, for busy and successful people to really fall out of touch, whether that's because you've moved for a work opportunity or you're just so busy with everything in your personal and professional life that you just haven't made the time for friendships. Uh, and lastly, that you just wish that you'd let yourself be happier, right? So we've got so much going on feeling like there's always a gap between where we are and where we need to be um, that we don't allow ourselves to be happy. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of potential there to just allow ourselves to be happy. Now, a few more presentations, that, a few more signs, sorry, that this presentation might be for you or might not be for you. Um, you've tried other stuff, right? So you've done coaching, you've done personal development, um, you've gone to meditation and, and yoga, um, and you've tried eating better and exercising more and all of those sorts of things, you know, while they certainly can provide benefits, they haven't really provided the more deeply felt improvements to quality of life that you might be looking for. Um, and second is, you know, you're interested in plant medicine, you're, you're up for exploring an experience and, and you're not willing to wait for legalization to benefit. So, you know, who knows how many years before the more powerful plant medicine such as ayahuasca um, and, uh, and psilocybin are actually available so that people can actually experience these uh, closer to home. Now, the third is you suspect that a retreat alone is not enough. Uh, and you're right. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this later. Um, you're a first timer or you want to go deeper than before. Um, if, uh, if you are a first timer, then uh, please let us know and uh, you know, we'll, we'll handle your case uh, accordingly. Um, you might have some nerves or some doubts. And so safety and expertise are important to you. Um, there, there are genuine risks uh, associated with this work. Now, the science has shown that those risks can be um, pretty much eliminated. Um, but there's a great de degree of uh, attention required to safety standards in order for this work to be done uh, at the highest level. And you're ready to commit to yourself uh, and invest in the time that's required to, to make the shift uh, from plant medicine. Uh, and finally, that you recognize that this isn't a quick fix, right? Um, some people think that you can attend one retreat and immediately your life will be changed forever. Um, I, this work is, is quite deep, it's quite complex, um, and it's, it's, it's by no means a quick fix. If you do discover a, a solution that uh, allows one to bypass the hard work, please uh, let the rest of us know. Now, here's the truth about plant medicine. Um, with the proper guidance, preparation, and integration around a retreat, it's possible to make massive progress in a short space of time. Unfortunately, the majority of retreat participants find themselves back to square one following a retreat, and the deeper opportunity and benefits are being missed. So you might be asking, well, why is that? Well, there's a number of reasons that feed into that. The first is that this is still quite a nascent ecosystem with really no standards of practice. So any, uh, any practitioner can implement whatever standards of practice they see fit for themselves. The second is that for the untrained eye, it's really difficult to know what a high quality uh, experience looks like. Um, and you can see this reflected in the fact that uh, on review websites, um, pretty much all of these experiences are reviewed with five stars. Um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. 
The third is that it's really challenging to find high quality guidance um, and, and it's really a supply problem. Um, and so it can take people quite considerable time before they're able to find that, uh, that high quality guidance. The first, fourth point is that uh, most people are skipping the necessary uh, mental and emotional work, right? So um, they're looking around for a retreat, they're clicking, uh, they're booking it, they're, uh, they're heading on the retreat, but they're not taking the time and the energy to prepare appropriately. Uh, and then finally, the integration uh, is, sorry, I wanted to share. So, so people are having breakthroughs on these retreats, right? You can see that from the, um, from the five-star reviews. Uh, it's clear that people are having breakthroughs. Uh, and so progress always feels amazing. And so at the end of a retreat, uh, people come out of these experiences with some breakthroughs, uh, without a doubt. But, uh, but often what happens is that the integration is being overlooked. And so you've had an amazing retreat, but once you've returned home, you know, a couple of weeks later, a month later, life returns to normal. And so all of the same, you know, all of those environmental, um, all of those environmental dynamics once you return home haven't changed, right? So you're still driving to work, you're still dealing with, uh, you know, your your friends and your family, and, and they all expect you to be the same person. And so, uh, given the decades that we've spent to become ourselves, uh, it's very challenging to expect through a one week retreat that we're going to be able to, you know, make make big changes to our brain and make big improvements to our quality of life. So. Um, you know, those are a few of the reasons we're going to go deeper into some of the other ones uh, through this presentation. Now, uh, Behold Retreats, we're really dedicated to providing expert guidance to facilitate leaders to break through, to make massive progress in a short space of time. So many, many breakthroughs uh, and, and also to provide you uh, what you need in order to sustain those benefits of plant medicine. Right. So how do you actually implement uh, improvements to the quality of everyday life uh, rather than you know, reverting to your pre-retreat self? Now, a little bit about me. Um, so again, my name is Jonathan DePotter, and I'm the founder and CEO for Behold Retreats. Um, I had five years ago now, I was living in Hong Kong, uh, where I was working for Accenture in strategy consulting. Um, and, you know, honestly, I, I had a pretty, a pretty good career there and a pretty good life. Um, I was leading a team of about 120 management consultants. Um, I had different clients, you know, across across a couple different cities. I uh, had a loving girlfriend, great friends in Hong Kong. It's a great city. Um, but fundamentally, I, I felt like something was just missing. Um, and I didn't know what I was looking for, but, uh, but I decided to take a year off. And as part of that, uh, found my way to an ayahuasca retreat with two friends in Peru. Uh, and plant medicine for me just really opened a new door. Um, I actually went into that retreat um, honestly speaking, a bit of a frustrated person, easily, you know, easily upset, a little impatient. And I also went into that first retreat as an atheist. Uh, and so that, you know, that experience opened up a number of new doors for me uh, that led me to attend quite a number of retreats over the three years that followed. Now, through that period, the friends, friends in, in my broader network also you know, took an interest and wanted to join the retreats. And so they also wanted to understand the science. So I, I personally was digging deeper and deeper into the science to understand you know, how are these benefits happening and uh, and do other people also you know, inviting friends on retreats to see whether they also had similar breakthroughs to me. Now, after about three, three and a half years of doing my own work and thinking that I had made you know, big progress, I was more patient, more empathetic, more productive, I was lucky enough to stumble across some really expert guidance. Now, in the space of about three or four weeks, I made more progress in those three or four weeks than I had made in the three weeks prior. No, oh, sorry, in the three years prior. Now, in those three years prior, I had atten attended you know, retreats around the globe with any number of, uh, you know, great people and nice people who were trying to do the best that they could to help me. Um, but I really wasn't guided to break through, unfortunately. Uh, and so once I had these series of breakthroughs in a short space of time, it really redoubled my motivation to guide others uh, so that they could make massive progress like I had in a short space of time and so that they could avoid ultimately my, my mistakes that I had made over those three, three and a half years. Um, and so last year we established uh, Behold Retreats uh, and really we're, we're providing holistic journeys so that clients can really break through and, and sustain those benefits. Now, we're early in our journey, but we've really had some great recognition for our leadership and innovation in this space um, from, from a broad variety of media, uh, as well as an award from Destination Deluxe as a runner-up for the Best Wellness Program of the Year 2020. 
Now, we're going to go a little bit deeper uh, into some of the steps here in order for us to make the most out of plant medicine. Um, so number one, we're going to talk about why your brain needs unlocking to foster growth. Number two, we're going to talk about uh, understanding your consciousness and your potential and the relationship between the two. Number three, we're going to talk about realizing your future self with plant medicine. Uh, and number four, we're going to talk about the common mistakes and uh, how to avoid them. So why does the brain need unlocking uh, and renewal to facilitate growth? Um, so there's three primary reasons uh, that I see that, that we why, that explain why we really benefit from these experiences. Now, the first is that we have pretty much universally, all of us have some past trauma uh, and certainly limiting beliefs. And small, in, small incidents can actually have quite a profound impact. Um, so one of the examples that I give is, you know, imagine if you're five years old and mom's had a long bad day at work and after work you guys go grocery shopping together and you're walking back in carrying some groceries for mom and you drop something, you drop a bag of groceries and something uh, breaks on the floor. Now in that moment, mom's had a bad day and she says to you, you never get anything right, just get out of the way. Now for a five-year-old child, they don't know how to distinguish between that which should take hold in the subconscious and that which is just mom at the end of a bad day. And so that experience can really take hold uh, deep in the mind of the child. And for example, the child the next day playing ball at school with a group of friends uh, might be handed the ball. And in that moment, that, that memory resurfaces and she tells herself or he tells himself, you never get anything right, just get out of the way. And so the child passes on the ball. And in that moment, you know, that pattern has become hardwired or can become hardwired. And so that can fundamentally change the trajectory and quality of life um, for that child. And that's just a, a minor infraction, right? Um, certainly children all over the world uh, experience much more challenging and traumatic experiences than that. The second dynamic is that uh, we have intergenerational trauma, right? So uh, our parents were traumatized and their parents were traumatized and their parents were traumatized. And so there's a bit of a pattern of, of trauma that's being um, passed down through the generations, which affects uh, nearly all of us. And it's, it's very common uh, through working with plant medicine that people uncover these suppressed and repressed memories uh, that are often you know, locked deep in the subconscious. Uh, and sometimes, you know, clients ask, well, why would I want to uncover those things? Well, those things are manifesting in our character, right? And so whether they manifest as anger or pride or envy, whatever other, you know, lower level emotions, frustration, um, you know, those are the sorts of things that do manifest in our character. And sometimes we don't understand the reasons for uh, why we're acting in particular ways. And so plant medicine can really help us to discover those things, kind of unlock those memories, uh, reconcile reconcile um, the, the past and, and really accept what, what has happened and to put it in the past and leave it in the past. Now, the second piece is that we're really not particularly well equipped to deal with the complexity of modern life. Uh, we have so much going on in our personal and professional lives that our thinking minds really str struggle to keep up and to manage with that everyday complexity. Now, what starts to happen is that our brain starts to take shortcuts uh, in order to deal with that complexity, almost as kind of an energy efficient mechanism, right? You can't possibly take in all of the stimulus of everything that's happening uh, in the work life or in the, in the in, the, in your personal life. And so you begin to take shortcuts in your thinking because there's just so much going on. So you have to. Um, now that sounds like a positive adaptive response, but in reality, um, what tends to happen is that we come to use a very small subset of our neural pathways. So we're actually losing some of our brain function because our thinking has become a little bit deterministic uh, or overly patterned, which is, which is a real pity. Um, and, you know, the image I showed before is uh, in terms of the brain reconciling, this is a major factor uh, within that. Uh, and then the third is an overactive default mode network. Now, the, the default mode network is responsible for thoughts which are related to I, me, my. Um, and a lot of people have highly repetitive thought patterns in relation to themselves. Like, oh, you need to be doing more or, oh, you're not good enough or this or that or the other. Uh, and the default mode network is also responsible for future and past orientation. 
Um, so when our brain wanders off into the past, um, you know, often, often that can lead to negative or depressive thoughts for some people. And when our brain wanders off into the future, um, obviously, you know, we're thinking about the future and what needs to happen. And, and for some people that can be uh, anxiety inducing. And, and so the default, by dampening the default mode network, uh, with plant medicine, we get to see how much more peace there is in the present moment uh, and be and, and therefore therefore also activate what's called the task positive network, uh, which allows us to work more kind of in flow. And I think, you know, the default mode, mode network, I think, is ultimately what's responsible for this you know, brilliant quote, quote that, you know, the mind is a wonderful servant, uh, but it's a terrible master. And so by dampening down the default mode network, we really gain back control and we can use the, the beautiful tool that is our mind as and when it's required. But it's not kind of on these uh, unhelpful loops that uh, that it can sometimes uh, find itself in. Now, I wanted to quickly show this photo again, because those, you know, those three factors, the um, past trauma and limiting beliefs, the uh, complexity of the modern world and the default mode network. Um, this is really what the three things that are being addressed uh, when we have a plant medicine experience. So that neurogenesis kind of dampens the default mode networks, which is what allows this information exchange and reconciliation to take place between the various regions of the brain. Uh, and then through that experience, we also have an amplification of what's happening in the subconscious. So that's what allows us to access the limiting beliefs and past trauma um, and decompartmentalize so that we're able to rewire, our, rewire and improve our patterns uh, of thinking. So the first insight that I have for you guys is that your growth is being limited by past experiences, old beliefs and unhelpful thinking patterns. Some of these things you may not even be conscious of. So once you rejuvenate your brain and identify and let go of that which no longer serves you, you're primed for growth. Now, the second piece here that I like to share is uh, understanding consciousness and your growth potential. Now, the work on the left hand side here is by Dr. David Hawkins. And what he did was to map out the levels of consciousness. Now, the levels of consciousness is something that we all instinctively understand. Um, and what he's done is to map the various emotional states to what we experience in daily life. So at the lower level emotional states, which is shame, guilt, apathy, grief, and fear, we generally experience inaction, right? Which is a form of depression. Um, in the middle there, you see desire, anger, and pride. Uh, and what, we're, what we commonly experience there is hyperactivity, right? So this is when the mind is in overdrive and has a thousand and one ideas about uh, what we need to do or what we could do uh, and is constantly future oriented. Then um, moving up from there, uh, we move more into the emotions of courage, neutrality, willingness, and acceptance, which is really where we can begin to be happy and productive. Uh, and at the top of that scale is uh, what's described as reason, which is really when we're at peak performance. So, you know, any of the scientific luminaries that are cranking out world-class research, et cetera, generally they're operating, you know, in, in this space. Uh, or near this space. Often there's lower level emotions that are, you know, that are bringing us to a, a lower steady state, but they're able to operate in this space when, when they're in a state of flow uh, with their work. Now, the transition between reason up into the higher levels of consciousness of love and joy and peace uh, really, really represents a total paradigm shift, right? And so that's the transition for the rational into the spiritual, the linear into the exponential, um, and is the basis for a lot of the study that we see at the, um, the psychedelic research centers that we, uh, that we spoke about before. Another dynamic that's, um, that I think is interesting is that, you know, once, once you break through this level of 200 here, um, is, uh, it, it becomes easier uh, for, for us to continue our growth because we've, uh, we're more into an extend, expanded state of being rather than a more contracted state of being, which is uh, below 200. So I'd like, to, I'd like to also share a little bit of a, a definition of consciousness. So, so what do we mean by a level of consciousness? So what we mean is our level of understanding of ourselves, uh, of the universe around us, and the relationship between those things. Um, and this, as I mentioned before, this is something that we all instinctively understand, right? Um, and it's also worth mentioning that our experience of reality is a direct reflection of our level of consciousness, right? So if we're highly conscious, 
um, then are, we experience better things in the world. If we're stuck in much lower level emotions, then we experience much more negative uh, things in the world. And so elevating our consciousness uh, becomes a very practical and rational way for us to improve our experience of everyday life. Now, unfortunately, um, through the work that, that Dr. David Hawkins did, he showed that a large percentage of the population is really kind of stuck in, in hyperactivity or, or even worse. Uh, and so they're stuck in the hustle and grind of, you know, and, and the associated emotions that go along with that of desire and pride and potentially anger. Uh, those people who really, you know, believe that they deserve more. Uh, than they than they currently have, and so um, you know I think that's changing now. I think there's so much more in, in the coaching space. There's so much more happening in terms of uh, personal growth and, and spiritual growth that a lot of more people are are raising up to the higher levels of consciousness, uh, and that really represents a massive opportunity for us individually, uh, but also collectively. Because as more people raise up, their motivations shift towards uh, helping others rather than just helping themselves. Now, as we move up these layers of consciousness and, and uh, plant medicine certainly helps us uh, facilitate through that, through that process, there are what I would describe as kind of universal experiences that, that we can have. Now, um, some of these are often described as universal love or the interconnectivity of all things or ego dissolution or God consciousness. Um, and now all of these experiences uh, are, are quite profound and universal, right? So it doesn't matter what, whether you're um, speaking with cultures deep in the Amazon or, you know, some of the uh, more advanced spiritual teachers in, in the Buddhist world. Um, these are universal experiences. And so having these experiences is is incredibly profound, right? It's uh, having an academic understanding that these experiences are possible versus a experiential, um, like an experience whereby you actually achieve these sorts of experiences or have these sorts of experiences um, are, is, just, is just, you know, as different as night and day. Um, you can't really reduce, you know, it's often these, these experiences are described as ineffable, you know, impossible to reduce uh, down, down to words. Now, um, through these experiences, uh, we also tend to find ourselves into a new growth cycle, right? Um, because once we experience universal love, where we recognize that um, it's so much more powerful, universal love is so much more powerful than anything that's rational, um, that, sends, that sets us on a fundamentally different path. Uh, in terms of integrating that into our everyday character. The challenge is, of course, to maintain that elevated level of consciousness so that love becomes your uh, preeminent state rather than just something that you experience temporarily. And then once you're back home from a retreat, you know, you're, you're flipping off the next guy in traffic or, or whatever that might look like. Um, it's also worth noting that, uh, you know, achieving these higher levels can often lead to quite major changes uh, for, for people and, and for their lives. Um, so that could be changes to friends, changes to hobbies, changes to career, etc. You know, it's, it's quite likely that if you achieve um, and break, have some major breakthroughs for yourself, you're not going to be terribly interested in going out for drinks on a Friday night. And so there's, a, you know, there's shifts uh, that come with that that, uh, that are worth mentioning. Now, the last piece I'll share here is that without guidance and mental and emotional work, it's super common to land back where, where you were. So, you know, you, you get elevated through a plant medicine experience. You have this big breakthrough of, uh, say, universal love, and then you land straight back to where you were. Now, now why is that? Well, it's often because we haven't been guided to release those lower level emotions, that trauma, those limiting beliefs. Uh, and so it's so, super important to do high quality mental and emotional work so that we can come into a retreat with the right uh, with the right context. Now, the second inf insight that I have for you guys is uh, elevate your consciousness and you'll be more creative, more productive, more loving, and more joyful. Um, I, I said to a friend uh, the other day and it kind of stuck with me, it's, it's like life on easy mode. Um, so so why, wouldn't, why wouldn't we want that, right? Now, the, this, the other way to look at this is, um, is the evolution from our egocentricity to a more holistic approach to life. Now, we live in a world, or we've been living in a world that has been dominated by a more egocentric uh, motivation, whereby we're getting our guidance from the mind, right? And we believe that life is happening to us or life is happening for us. Uh, we're often motivated to fulfill societal expectations and, uh, and 
and material ambitions and desires rather than what our heart is really telling us that we should be doing. As a result of that, we have priorities that relate to accumulation of money, power, and status. Uh, and often we're not really thinking about the impact that that can have to people and the planet more broadly. As a result of that, we can experience a lot of inner turmoil, uh, compulsive thinking, comparing and wanting that we spoke about before. And the underlying emotions there are, are not necessarily the most healthy ones, right? They're pride, envy, fear, and often scarcity. Um, and it's really impossible from that place to feel like you're living to the fullest. Um, and the result of that is, is sickness, right? It's lack of fulfillment and disconnection from the whole. Uh, and we can see the destruction of the planet uh, as well. Now, I think where we're going um, collectively and individually is, is towards uh, what I describe as holism, which is where we take guidance from our minds, our body, our heart, and our spirit, right? So all of the elements that we have available to us. Uh, and there's a part of me that kind of cringes a little bit to say that because I couldn't have believed in, in a spirit five years ago. Um, but, but ultimately, that we understand that life is happening through us, right? That we are just a channel for consciousness. Uh, thoughts don't necessarily originate within our brains. We are just the channel for what is, what is happening through us. Um, and so we're motivated to fulfill our inner potential uh, and be of greater service to the world around us. Now, the priorities there is, is, to, and is to transcend the egoic mind, right? So trying to reduce the self-interest and listening to uh, the heart and the spirit and, and to one another so that we can understand and add to the whole, uh, whether that be the community or your industry or uh, the, planet, the planet at large. And through that, I think we can feel a deeper sense of inner contentment. We can feel, we can be more feeling. We can feel, we can be more knowing. Uh, we can feel like we have, we can enjoy what we do have. Um, and the emotions that underlie that are, are love and joy and peace and abundance. And we can really feel like we're living to the fullest. Uh, and, that's, and that's healthy. And we're connected with ourselves. We're connected with the people around us. And we're in harmony with the planet. So the message here is, is really be the change, right? Um, it's easy to look around us and to see things that we don't like. Um, but if we ourselves can individually move towards holism, uh, then that represents you know, the single most significant contribution that I think anyone can make. Now, number three, we're gonna talk a little bit about realizing your future self with plant medicine. Um, so unfortunately, the typical approach for plant medicine retreats is that people go on such a retreat without uh, expert guidance, right? So a coach or a therapist that's really going to be able to help guide them uh, to prepare for a retreat and also to integrate the experience. Uh, and as a result of that, they're, they're not doing the mental and emotional work, right? And they're not able to set very deep, specific intentions um, because they haven't done that work. And they're skipping that, that preparation, that integration. Now, typical results from that is that um, they might have some breakthroughs, uh, but they're not really able to integrate uh, properly and, uh, and often not able to release those lower level emotions. And far too commonly, back to square one uh, within a month's time, you, you often can see that people get into a little bit of a cycle in terms of you know, every month or every three months, they're going on another retreat because they haven't been able to get those breakthroughs that they're looking for, they know there's more, or they haven't been able to, to um, uh, they haven't been able to integrate the experience. And so that's a real shame because they're getting into a pattern of not using each of those experiences for, you know, fundamental improvements to the quality of everyday life. Now, what we recommend is make sure that you're working with expert coaches, therapists, and healers who've guided hundreds plus uh, and really understand how other clients that they've supported have progressed, right? Um, and before a retreat, you really want to take the time and the energy to define a clear picture of your future self uh, and to use the retreat uh, as the embodiment, right? So what are your... What is your um, health going to look like? What is your relationships going to look like? What is your career um, and financial status going to look like? So really, you know, picture that future self and then use the retreat um, and, and the preparation and integration for and after the retreat to really embody that um, so that, you know, with that, you'll, in the plant medicine retreat and, and in the ceremonies, you'll be able to, you know, Im again, embody that future self and you begin to, uh, some of those gaps between where you are today and, and that future self that you would like to be, those gaps will become self-evident and, and you begin to get insights in terms of the changes that you need to make in order for you to become, uh, for you to become that person.
And so through that approach, it's really possible to make a massive amount of progress in a short space of time um, and, and also to let go of those lower levels of emotions and ultimately to, to elevate your kind of steady state consciousness. Um, and as I said before, each of those uh, retreat experiences should prove as a meaningful, you know, should provide a meaningful improvement to quality of life. Um, the last point I'll mention here is that, again, more retreats does not necessarily mean more progress, right? More progress means more progress. Uh, elevated consciousness is what we're looking for here. Another dynamic which I think is interesting and, and proves that we still have a way to go in terms of the maturity in this ecosystem is if you look at the common you know, review websites for uh, plant medicine retreats, you can see that everyone is having amazing experiences, right? Um, and uh, I've chosen here just a, a number of the retreat centers that have, or these are all of the retreat centers that I could see that had over 30 reviews. And what you can see is that every single one of them has 4.9 stars or five stars. Um, and, and I think that's because, you know, this is my hypothesis, is it's because customers really, they find it very challenging to know what good looks like, right? Um, it's not like the whole hotel industry where, you know, we can walk in and look around and see, oh, okay, yeah, this, this looks like a, a three-star hotel or a four-star hotel or a five-star hotel. Um, this is, uh, you know, this is spiritual work. It's very deep and complex work. Uh, and so people are ha clearly having great experiences at these plant medicine retreat centers. Uh, but it's also the case that, um, that there is variability in the quality of work. It's just that it's very difficult for the untrained eye um, to be able to know, to know what good looks like. And so, um, you know, again, this is just showing that this, this industry still has a long way to go in terms of maturation. So third insight that I would share with you guys is find experts, right? Um, the question is not whether past clients have left five-star reviews at the end of a retreat or if the place looks nice. The question is whether past clients have been able to make fundamental improvements to quality of everyday life upon their return home. Uh, and I would encourage anyone uh, to do reference checks, right? So um, again, you feel like a million bucks at the end of one of these retreats. And then again, it's super common for weeks or a month later to be back to square one. Um, so that's that's a real loss of, of, of opportunity. And so uh, don't be shy to do reference checks and ask who it is that you might be working with to speak with people and to really understand what their journey has been and whether they've been able to uh, you know, elevate their consciousness. And as a result of their elevated consciousness, what improvements they've actually made to the quality of their everyday life. Number four, um, we've touched on a number of these points, but I'll go a little bit, a little bit deeper into a few of them. Um, and uh, it's really, you know, it's important that as we approach this work that we avoid these common mistakes. Um, so one that I see commonly is in relation to motivation, right? As plant medicine becomes more popular, uh, we see a lot of people who are who want to participate in plant medicine, but don't really understand or don't really know their own reasons for doing so, right? So we hear a couple stories from friends. They've had some big breakthroughs, and now we want to go on a retreat. Um, I would encourage anyone who's thinking about doing this work, uh, number one, do your own research, and number two, find your own motivation, right? Um, be very clear on why you're motivated to do this work uh, and write it down and if you've got a meditation practice then you know this could be a really beautiful topic to meditate on and and try to decide whether it's right for you the second and third which are which are a bit related are legality and safety um, so unfortunately um, plant medicine is still not legal in the overwhelming majority of countries and so it's more and more common for people to travel for these experiences um, but unfortunately, this space is completely unregulated, right? So in countries where this work is permitted, um, it's not like it's overseen by uh, medical boards or anything like that. And so, um, you know, safety is a real concern um, because a lot of these retreat centers are quite small businesses and, and they don't often keep up with um, some of the contraindicated medicines, et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, again, my, my emphasis would be just make sure that, you know, you're doing this in a, in a legal context because it's the risks are just fundamentally not worth it, uh, particularly if you're, you know, a leader with, uh, you know, career, <laughs> career responsibilities and uh, perhaps a family at home. Um, and from a safety perspective, just make sure that um, you're going through a very high quality medical screening um, and, uh, and that safety is being taken seriously. And again, don't be afraid to ask questions in relation to that. Um, preparation, uh, we've spoken about before, um, but, but ultimately you want to go deep into where are you now in life? Um, and where is it that you want to be uh, ahead of a retreat so that you can set really deep and meaningful intentions. 
Uh, expert guidance, we've spoken about that already, so I won't go deeper. Uh, retreat selection. Uh, again, this is, this is such an, uh, a nascent space that it's very difficult to find a retreat that you can be confident uh, that is doing work at a high level. So uh, ask around, speak to lots of different people, um, and, and find an expert who can guide you uh, in, the, in the direction of a, a really high quality experience. Personally, I wouldn't necessarily trust friends that highly recommend another retreat center because, again, your average person is not able to know what good looks like. Um, and, and so it's a bit of a, a bit of a challenge, that one. Uh, number seven, expectations. It's best not to have too much uh, in the way of expectations for one of these retreat experiences. You know, we want to come in uh, with an open mind and an open heart uh, and allow the experience to unfold, right? Um, it's, it's great to understand the types of experiences and the types of challenges uh, that can arise uh, through these experiences, uh, but try not to come in uh, with, with too much in the way of expectations. Number eight, working towards goals. Um, so we come into one of these retreats, hopefully with some intentions and with our future self that we'd like to embody. Um, but at the same time, we also uh, would like the experience to unfold in a, in a relatively natural way. And so um, we want to find the right balance between working towards those goals and allowing the experience to kind of unfold on its own and to kind of let go of the egoic mind uh, to, to a great extent. So again, there's no hard and fast answer here. It's just about what's uh, finding that right balance through, through a ceremony. Uh, number, mo number nine is keeping track of the lessons. Uh, and this one as well is really about finding the right balance. Um, you know, it's easy to sometimes be completely carried away by the experience. And, you know, at the end of a ceremony, you realize, oh, I didn't work on my intentions or I didn't write down any of the great lessons that I had. Uh, and so for some people, you know, they, they like to write down their lessons. I like to write down my lessons uh, through the experience and keep a notebook. Other people like to um, just allow the experience to unfold and, and not have any paper on hand, but then sometimes they can regret because they're not able to integrate the experience, right? Because they haven't remembered exactly what, what those lessons were. Particularly this can happen if the lessons are coming one after another after another, right? If there's 20, 30 meaningful lessons in terms of ways to improve quality of life and we haven't been able to remember anything but three or four of those, then you know, the, clearly there's a massive loss of potential benefits there that we, uh, we might have captured if we brought a notepad along uh, to write things down. Um, integrating the lessons, again, what we really want to do is as we return home to really set time aside for ourselves, right? So even if that means waking up an hour earlier um, and uh, doing some journaling, some yoga, some meditation, um, really reviewing that future self that we committed to, reviewing those insights that we had uh, during the retreat experience so that each day we can hold ourselves accountable to that person that we are becoming uh, and really make sure that we're making steps in that direction rather than allowing life to take back over and for our, uh, our previous self to come back to be our, 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 our current self, if that makes sense. Um, another retreat. Um, it's, it's super common for people a month later to say, okay, I'm, I'm ready for another retreat. And, and I always say, okay, well, maybe. <laughs> um, and uh, what's, what's important here is that uh, each retreat, again, serves as a foundation for improvement to quality of life. And so um, it's worth, if, if that's not the case, then it's worth looking into that because, um, you know, it's worth changing something in terms of the preparation or the guidance or the integration process so that we make sure that each of those experiences is, is improving our lives and elevating our consciousness as well. Uh, and then the last is in relation to dependency, right? So um, it is super rare that people become dependent, but often the people who are not able to release those low, lower level emotions, uh, and so they're landing back in the same place, they often go back over and over and over again because they're trying to have that breakthrough, right? Um, and, and often it's, it's guidance that's, that's the lack of guidance that's leading to a bit of a dependency there. So just something to be conscious of. Now, uh, last insight here is that remember that you are fundamentally rewiring your neural pathways. Um, take me plant medicine seriously and avoid these mistakes and you will be rewarded big time. So um, hopefully you see that, number one, your brain would benefit from being unlocked and renewed. Uh, number two, uh, plant medicine can help you elevate your consciousness, accelerate your growth and evolution, and to live life to the fullest. Uh, number three, that this is pretty complex work, uh, and to get the most out of it and to get the most benefit out of it, you will need guidance from experts uh, to help you identify your blind spots. And uh, yeah, we all have, we all have blind spots. 
Um, with your commitment and by avoiding those common mistakes, it's possible to make massive progress in a short space of time. So um, I shared a little bit about my journey earlier, um, but you know, these kind of got two options for how you might approach this work. And option one is what I've called the hustle and grind, which is the hard way. Um, which is what I did for, for many years before I was able to find uh, expert guidance, right? So I had attended, you know, eight to 10 retreats. Um, I've done lots of hard work. I'd spent tons of money on international travel and, uh, you know, years had gone by, it'd been three, three and a half years. And I had literally spent months uh, at retreat centers, right? And so uh, after, you know, after X number of retreats, maybe you find some experts, right? Maybe, yay. Uh, and then you can have a massive, you know, massive breakthroughs and make huge progress in a short space of time. Uh, but maybe you don't, right? Uh, and that's, that's, uh, that would be a real pity. Um, and what's, what's interesting about this is that because we generally continue to have breakthroughs, it's very difficult for us to know whether we're really making the possible progress. Uh, again, this ecosystem is just so new. Um, that uh, that we can feel and like I felt you know over those three years that we're making great progress when it's not really true uh, and our ego can really <laughs> really convince us that we are making great progress um, so uh, option two is uh, work with us uh, work with behold retreats and here's here's what will happen if you do number one you'll make massive progress in weeks not years number two you're gonna have expert guidance uh, throughout your journey for more breakthroughs Number three, you're going to have peace of mind regarding safety and care. Uh, number four, honestly, you're going to save time and money, right? Because you're not going to be running around to different retreat centers over the years. Uh, number four, you're going to sustain the benefits and you're going to be empowered. You're going to have all the tools, uh, emotional, mental, etc., cetera, uh, in order for you to continue your growth uh, after our work together. Um, and, and finally, you'll see that, uh, you know, the approach that we've been living in under the industrial age uh, of the hustle and grind is, is best left behind uh, and that uh, trial and error in relation to plant is, is best left to uh, baking cookies, not to, uh, to plant medicine retreats. Um, so a little bit about how it works. Um, so there's a lot of detail here, but I'll breeze through it quickly. So the first phase is really around alignment, right? So um, you schedule a call with us uh, and then we tell you um, a little bit more about what we're doing and how we work. We understand your motivations and goals, uh, answer any questions that you may have, and then begin to shape what a journey together might look like. Um, on the back of that, you decide whether or not you'd like to move forward, uh, and then we move into the, um, the customer onboarding processes from there. The next phase is really around preparation. Uh, I've spoken enough about that. Uh, generally, three weeks uh, is best, um, and it takes about you know, three or four hours uh, per week um, in order to do that work uh, at a, to a high level. Um, the, then, then comes the retreat, right? So one week, sometimes two weeks, uh, depending upon your preferences. Um, and that's, you know, you want to be completely immersed in that. You don't want to be dealing with uh, Skype, etc. cetera, uh, calendar meetings work. You want to really switch off if at all possible. Integration, which we've spoken about before. Again, that's a three week period. Uh, and then finally, if, if, as, and when, uh, additional support is required. Uh, of course, we, we, we do additional follow-ups at no extra charge. Uh, very important for us that we maintain a 100% client success rate. Now, you'll have expert guidance for your journey um, uh, throughout, throughout the process, as I shared before. And so um, I've shared with you here a little bit of our broader team. Uh, we work with a broad variety of medicines, uh, ayahuasca, psilocybin, San Pedro, and others by request. Uh, and we have retreats in a number of locations, Costa Rica, Jamaica, Mexico, and Peru, uh, as well as Netherlands, Portugal, and Spain. Now, I'm also pleased to share that, uh, yes, indeed, the coaches that were able to guide me after three and a half years of my own hustle and grind uh, are indeed facilitating our programs. Uh, and so that's Cecilia and Misha here. They're truly exceptional uh, and you'll be more broadly supported by uh, David, who is uh, in charge of our um, in charge of our invitations, and uh, Sarah, who leads our practitioners, partnerships, and community, uh, and SJ, who leads our retreats and customer experience. Uh, and then finally, you've got uh, that bald guy on the end who just tries to be helpful. 
Now, um, a few of the retreats, just to give you some kind of inspiration for the sorts of retreats that we can do for you. Um, I try not to. I try to ask people not to focus too much on the retreats because it's really about improving quality of everyday life. But people do love these retreats, so we we got to share a little bit. Um, so we do a, a really beautiful retreat in in uh, the Sacred Valley of Peru, which is really an amazing place to do this work. It's near Machu Picchu. Amazing hiking. You definitely want to stay another week if you go here. And um, yeah, it's just a, it's an incredible place and, you know, some ancient civilizations and um, some really, you know, there's a lot of the plant medicine traditions are, are from Peru and, and from this this area. Right. So it's a it's a beautiful place to, to do this work. Um, in Costa Rica, we've got a beautiful eco eco lodge retreat center that's led by um, a great ethnobotanist, uh, also named Jonathan with a note. And uh, yeah, beautiful location. The clients who attend this one really just, uh, they, they rave about it endlessly. Um, Jonathan does amazing forest walks. Uh, he's an author himself, really knows uh, plant medicine exceptionally well. And, uh, you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the proceeds from his work goes towards uh, indigenous, uh, indigenous uh, building water tanks for indigenous populations, as well as conservation work. So it's, uh, it's always nice to, um, to support that sort of work. To give you a bit of a sense of what a, a kind of a retreat schedule can look like, um, this is for the one that I just showed you in Costa Rica. Uh, four ceremonies um, with uh, with two different plant medicines, uh, ayahuasca and San Pedro, and uh, they also do these beautiful ethnobotanical walks, uh, yoga, art therapy, uh, massage, different rainforest experiences. It's just a, a beautiful place to do work. Um, we also can do uh, private private retreats. Um, so this is one that we can do for you in the Netherlands, um, which is uh, yeah beautiful little spot, um, you know very uh, countryside location, um, beautiful beautiful little spot. Uh, and we also have a group retreat um, in the Netherlands, which is uh, a couple hours train train ride from Amsterdam, and uh, much more of a, a modern a modern uh, retreat center relative to some of those in uh, in say Costa Rica or Peru. Uh, we also did an incredible um, kind of five star uh, retreat, private retreat in uh, in Tulum. Um, so really beautiful beachfront villa um, that uh, that is just incredible. So um, if you're looking for you know top of the line uh, high end private retreat, just uh, just let us know. Uh, and we're also doing a leadership series. So um, starting in April this year, travel permitting, uh, we're going to start doing uh, some leadership retreats for organizations that uh, would like to bring a group of leaders or even you know groups of leaders that would like to come together. Um, so if that's of interest to you, just let us know and uh, we can plan for, for one for you. So again, this is for successful leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs. Um, and I won't blast back through these points, but um, you know, ultimately, it's important that you're ready to really commit to yourself, to your growth, um, and against your ego, right? So this isn't uh, this isn't quite the same as uh, as buying a new car, um, and that you're willing to be helped. Um, and and if that's the case, then then this is right for you. Now, there's three ways that we guide clients. Um, the first is with a seven-week program with a group retreat. The second is with a seven-week program with a private retreat. Now, for each of those, you're guided through those seven weeks, uh, three weeks for integration, where we need at least three or four hours a week from you. Um, you get a one-week retreat, which is um, at a location of our choosing together, your choosing, um, and then we, we help you facilitate that. Uh, and then uh, three weeks of integration. Um, now the preparation and integration, obviously those happen remote uh, and we have a weekly Q&A session uh, to answer any of the questions you have. Uh, and then we also have group and or private coaching, right? From, uh, from the coaches that I mentioned before to make sure that you know, you're getting to know yourself better, you're identifying your blind spots and you're setting deep intentions so that you can really get the most out of the retreat experience. Uh, and then finally, we also provide community membership uh, and an ongoing access to the program. Uh, and that's really to make sure that you have everything that you need to continue your own growth work. Uh, this is really about empowering you so that you have everything that you need um, for, uh, for ongoing growth and continuing to elevate your consciousness. Now, the third way is we can also do uh, private work, right? So programs, coaching, and retreats. 
Um, so whether those be private retreats or private group retreats, bespoke programs, um, retreats for leader group, leadership groups, as I mentioned before, for companies that are really wanting to take their performance to another level, um, or if you've got specialist requirements, right, and uh, you need a coach or a therapist that are, that are more specific to your needs. Now, a few, a few ways for you to think about value um, as we come towards the end of this presentation. So the first is money and time saved, right? So as I shared before, um, my own journey was years trying uh, a number of very high quality retreats without major breakthroughs. Um, through that, you, you're going to save a lot of money if you're able to make a, sh a huge amount of progress in a, in a short space of time. Uh, and you're also going to save months that could have been spent or might have been spent at uh, various retreat centers. Uh, here and there and everywhere. Uh, and after that, you, you still might not have had your, your breakthrough, right? So uh, I think, you know, whether it's with us or with other experts, just make sure that you find experts, right? Um, and uh, the, other, the other aspect of this is that you might consider expensing this, right? This is, this is really personal development that works. And so a number of our clients are, uh, are expensing this as professional development work. Now, benefits to your personal life. Again, think of these benefits that I've been describing in weeks versus in years um, in terms of you know, quality of your thoughts and how you relate to yourself and others, better relationships, being really motivated by life, right? Having you know, that bounce in your step as you jump out of bed in the morning um, and having kind of reached this new growth trajectory now versus, versus you know, whenever it is that you find the, the right expert guidance to break through. Uh, and to have more joy, love, and peace each day, right? You, you really can't put, uh, you can't put a price on that. Um, and then from a professional perspective, right? Again, the benefits now versus who knows when. Um, benefits to your leadership skills, whether that's uh, delivering against your P&L targets, whether that's you know, adding to your company value because you want to IPO in X period of time. Um, if, you're, if you're still on a salary, right? Uh, impact your earning potential, right? If you become more patient, more empathetic, more thoughtful, um, you know, you're going to be able to contribute into your exec um, discussions in your boardroom discussions in ways that you know you might not have before um, because you have better relationships across the team etc cetera, etc cetera, right um, you'll be achieving more in less time right so you've got better clarity in terms of what you're trying to achieve uh, in your professional life um, and and you know once you have that clarity it's much easier to execute uh, efficiently um, and as I shared before, getting out of the hustle and grind, uh, if you're in it, and, uh, and a large percentage of the world is, and, and, and having a deeper alignment to purpose. So um, to wrap this up, uh, our offer is, is relatively simple. Uh, massive progress or a refund. So um, we, we, we believe that you will absolutely make massive progress uh, in, in your growth uh, over the course of these seven weeks and, uh, and, and massive progress towards living to the fullest and without regrets. And so our introductory offer, uh, the pricing starts at 15K for the seven week program with a group retreat. Uh, and the prices go up from there, depending upon the retreat and the options that you've selected. So our pricing will go up next month uh, and we are limited to 30 places for our seven week transformation. Now, um, this absolutely requires your commitment, your honesty, your humility, uh, and your vulnerability. So those are all preconditions that we need uh, in order to, to guide you along this journey. Um, time commitment, I mentioned before, it's probably about three to five hours per week for the six weeks uh, and total immersion during your, your week long or two week long retreat. Um, and again, I'll wrap that up with our guarantee. So if you don't make massive progress, we provide a refund. Um, and uh, as next steps, uh, you can click apply for a consultation below and you'll speak to one of our experts or you'll speak to myself and uh, we'll take the conversation together uh, forward from there. Now, a few questions that uh, commonly receive. Uh, will this work for me? Um, generally speaking, the answer is yes. Uh, there are people who need to be screamed out, right? So there are uh, a variety of um, uh, physical, uh, psychological, and also medications uh, that are contraindicated, right? Uh, and so we do go through quite an in-depth uh, medical screening to make sure that this is safe uh, for you. Uh, what about COVID? Can I follow up in a few months? Uh, what the majority of our clients are doing is actually starting the program now. Uh, you can actually make massive progress uh, ahead of attending a retreat. Um, and that will set you up for a much better retreat, right? So you can actually start it to do the emotional processing, the emotional release work, um, so that your retreat experience, you make much more progress uh, and you're not amplifying so much of those lower level emotions because you've already let those go. So a lot of our clients are starting the... Um, uh, 
starting the program now. And then, of course, we're extending that out when they're able to travel for a retreat, given the COVID situation. Um, if you want to follow up later, uh, absolutely. Um, but the prices will have gone up by them. Um, this seems expensive. Why? Uh, well, because you'd be working with, with absolute experts. Uh, and so uh, this is not necessarily an area to, uh, to be cheap. So uh, um, if you're in a position to make this sort of a commitment, beautiful. If you're not, that's, uh, that's totally okay as well. Uh, what if I don't benefit as, as you've described? Then we provide a refund, right? So um, again, it's important to us that we maintain 100% success rate. Um, through the process of getting to know you, uh, we will decide whether or not we're well-placed to guide you. Um, and if we if if we're committed, or if you're committed, then we're committed, and we're committed together. Then uh, absolutely, we we believe you'll make massive progress over over that period, or we provide a refund, no problem. Now, despite the science and guarantees, I'm still feeling a bit apprehensive and maybe a little nervous. Is this normal? Absolutely. Um, you know, any any adventure ha should have some nerves associated with it, right? That's kind of part and parcel of the definition of, of what an adventure is. Uh, you're going someplace or you're doing something that you've you've never done before. Um, I've had, you know, uh, probably close to 40 ceremonies over the past five years now. Uh, I still get nervous. Um, and so absolutely, it's it's completely normal. Um, can I do the program in less time? Uh, you can. Uh, in a private setting, uh, in a private context, it's much easier. Um, generally speaking, where possible, we would recommend three weeks before, three weeks after. Um, if we need to tighten things a little bit beforehand, certainly we can do that and we can guide you um, to, to do the preparation a little bit faster. Do you work with everyone? Uh, no, we do not work with uh, narcissists, uh, complainers, or victims. There are some people who are simply too stuck uh, in their stories, and uh, and so we're we're unfortunately not uh, sufficiently uh, equipped to guide uh, people who are in those those sorts of uh, situations. Can I do this with friends and family? Yes, absolutely. It's uh, it's a beautiful way to do this work and to really bond with loved ones in a in a much deeper way. Um, actually, I myself am hoping to do it, uh, do a, do a, do a ceremony with my mother for the first time uh, later this year. Why are you focused on leaders? Shouldn't everyone have this? Uh, yes, absolutely, everyone should have this. Uh, by focusing on leaders, we hope to accelerate the quality of conversation uh, in relation to this subject, so that it becomes legal faster and democratize faster in, in more countries. So um, absolutely everyone should have this. Um, what we're doing is focusing on leaders for those reasons at this point in time. Um, and finally, I have some questions about whether my health condition will allow me to participate. How do I find out? Um, come through our process. Um, again, you'll get, you'll get put through a, a very robust medical screening process. Uh, and through that, we'll provide you all of the information that you need in order to make a fully informed decision. So, with that, that's really the end of our uh, presentation. Thank you for getting to this point. We hope that was useful to you, uh, whether you work with us or whether you don't work with us. Uh, if you'd like to explore and take this to the next step, again, uh, click to apply for a consultation. We look forward to speaking with you. Uh, thank you and mahalo and wishing you the very best with plant medicine and breakthroughs and living life to the fullest. Aloha.